Hello everybody. This is the last stage or final part of our sculpture project. And just as a reminder, we're looking at uh, the sculptor Jean-Claude and Christo, who uh, get people to look at things that they normally don't look at by wrapping it and getting them and hiding it and kind of creating a bit of mystery to it and helping them see what has always been there, but we don't usually look at. So by getting us to look at it in a new way. So just as a recap as well, uh, the previous class we did parts one and two, where you had chosen an object, and then you wrapped the object, and then you lit the object. So I'm just going to show you what I had selected. And um, so this is the object that I chose. It's actually a toy that um, some of my, a couple of my kids have. One of my kids had it's a cash register a toy cash register of all things and the reason i chose this was i thought it had a really nice form the way you had those three parts attached to it and i know there are a lot of details to it that kind of seem distracting but that's okay we're gonna wrap it and so in my mind i kind of imagined what it would look like without all those numbers and buttons all over it and all those little and all the colors so that's why i was saying sometimes black and white filters help you filter out all those details and so you can see this is my speed wrap and and then after i wrapped it i kind of looked at it from different positions to kind of see which position would kind of give it the best shadow and of course again this helps to do it in a darkened room and the pose or the the, the layout I ended up selecting was something that looked kind of like this, where you can kind of see the three forms and you get those nice shadows that reveal the form. All right, so then now what we're going to do is we're going to use that, um, you're going to use that still life photo and we're going to create a still life drawing based on it. And the idea is to kind of recreate that three dimensional form by using by creating the basic shapes and then the shadows. Now, before we do our own still life sketches, I want to show you some of Christo, Christo's uh, drawings. And uh, one of his incredible talents beyond his eyes and his being able to see forms is that um, he's a really good artist. These are some of his drawings. Um, and he would study what the form would look like if he wrapped it, partially wrapped it. Um, and you might say, well, you know, you can, you know, just like us, you can wrap it and then draw it. And that's not so hard, right? We're going to do that. And that's true. Um, this is a bottle and this is a chair. Um, however, some things are a little bit harder to draw uh, beforehand and so a lot of what he would do was he would have to create these studies and these drawings to try to convince people and get them to buy into it uh, into these ideas and he's so smart because what he would do is as he drew these drawings and he made these studies and they built these models to try to get people to convince them as became more and more well known his drawings would become more and more, um, they'd almost become like collectibles, right? Uh, because what would happen is as the work was finished, they would disassemble it and the work wouldn't exist anymore, the actual sculpture, right? So you couldn't actually own the sculpture. You can own photographs of it, right? But what's more valuable and of his work and of his hand is... Um, the actual sketches preparatory sketches and drawings that he would make so you can kind of see this kind of shows which trees where they're located how big they are and what they might look like when they're wrapped right so none of this is kind of really left to chance right he kind of has a pretty good idea and these are what galleries and people um, buy and it's the sale of all these prints not prints, it's the sale of all his drawings and visualizations that actually help him pay for, help them pay for 
their projects because if you remember the uh, Reichstag over here when it actually did happen um, they paid for it out of their own pockets and the reason they were able to pay for it is be through the sale of all these drawings and studies and models that they had to make and had to use that's what actually paid for all this and the other thing as well that that they, they do is when these projects are finished all this fabric it'd be a real waste to kind of just I guess, throw it all away um, and so what they do is besides selling all their drawings they also take that fabric and they cut it up into swatches and then they sell swatches as well not, not the watch swatch but like small patches of the fabric so that people can air quotes own a little bit of the original project right and so you'll see sometimes people will show their um their little swatch of fabric that was used to kind of cover it and, and it's kind of neat it's kind of like having a souvenir from the project right so that's how they generate all the all, all the money to actually realize their projects because i mean that costs a lot of money right um and i'm not sure any governments would kind of just throw out that kind of money to make it the other thing as well is um the drawings again help people visualize what it might look like um if they actually were to make it right so you can kind of see this is one of his drawings but you kind of get a pretty good idea of where this is it's in paris the eiffel tower and it kind of shows where the object is gives context and then it kind of shows what the arc de triomphe looks like if you were to wrap it and uh and that's a hard sell because you know it's a pretty significant you know art um monument right it's a it's like a monument to the people that have died during world war one I, I believe um so it's a big big deal and uh it's yeah so so the sketches are actually really really important in his process okay so um again just as a recap uh, i had chosen different photos uh, some were better than others. This is the one I settled with, but some of the other ones I could have used look kind of like that, but that was a little too dark, and you also really couldn't see the most interesting part, those three forms. So in the end, we ultimately did not go with that. All right. Um, this is what we ended up going with. Now, you'll notice this time I'm going to use shading pencils, um, and you might have some of them at home. And the first thing I want to do is I want to show you the kind of major shapes of the shadows and the major shapes of the forms. Now, if you happen to have shading pencils at home, great. Um, you'll probably know as well that the darker pencils are the ones that uh, have the higher number attached to the B and the lower numbers are the ones that are lighter. So what meaning a 6B is much easier to create dark, dark shadows with, whereas a 2B is you have to press harder and so you end up getting a lighter shade okay so i'm going to use the pencils this time i'm not going to use the um i'm not going to use the pen this time uh if you don't have a pencil you can just use the pen or a regular hp pencil too so you'll notice here i've i've started off by drawing the 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 shapes so you want to make sure you get that accurate okay because uh when i say accurate i don't mean exact but something that is close so you notice mine doesn't look exactly like it um it just has the basic kind of outline i'm not worrying about any of the details i'm not even including the wrapping the um sort of the cord actually but then you'll notice that as i add more of the shadow to it that form starts to become more and more realistic and you can kind of see it's the way it looks in three dimensions more and more Right, so you'll notice that some parts are darker and some parts are lighter. So this part's darker, this part's lighter, and that's simply because of the way the light is hitting it. Um, some of the light actually creeps around on this side, whereas almost no light gets to this back side here. That's why you get differences in shadow. So it's really important to try to capture those differences. And then at the base, this is the darkest part here. It's a little bit raised because of the cord and absolutely no light can get underneath there. And so that's why you see this part here is the darkest part. So again, here, this part here, the darkest part. You'll notice I just changed pencils because I want a slightly lighter shade of shadow, right? Um, so again, dark. I'm going to go back to dark now. So you'll see the parts that are kind of 
most obstructed, most hidden, uh, have the darkest shadows. Okay. So you'll see now I've kind of pretty much got the basic form and the addition of those shadows really makes those forms almost come off the page. Uh, the, it's actually a flat drawing, but it looks three-dimensional, right? Um, and those shadows really help us see the form that we really couldn't see before. All we saw were outlines, flat outlines, shapes, right? Now, if you want a slightly higher grade, you're going to want, or if you want a higher grade, you're going to want to make sure that you get the values right. But you'll notice I'm starting to go back in and add some of those folds and some of those ripples and some of the creases. That will make it... That will increase the mark even more as well. Okay. And there we go. And that's the finished product. So you can kind of see it looks it looks pretty. You, I mean, you can clearly see the what the object would look like and feel like if you had it in front of you in your hands, except it's on a flat piece of paper, right? Um, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, now. Okay, so you're going to use the rest of the period now uh, to create a still life drawing. You want to make sure you draw the correct shape of the form. You want to capture the different values of the shadow. So darks, mediums, and light. And a higher grade is given to shadow that actually reveals the form. So you don't want to just shade and say, I'm done. Um, the shade is very purposeful. The shading is very purposeful. And a higher grade is also given for shading the texture. So things like the folds and the creases and the ripples. That way we know that um, it, it's actually a fabric that's wrapping the object. The object doesn't actually look like that. So we're going to use the remainder of the pier, most of the pier, to, to do this. And uh, when you finish... You're going to want to submit it to be marked um, in the assignment that says part three. Okay. Good luck. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes.